Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. I'm feeling very bright and over the top today. I think this might be one of the most colourful looks I have done this year. We do have a very exciting and colourful palette to review today. I didn't think this day would come because the previous collections... I really, really wasn't interested in them. But I saw this particular palette and I was like, I kind of need it. Today we are going to be talking about the Joey palette from the Revolution and Friends Season 3 drop. Featured mostly new eyeshadow palettes but some other things. I think there were sheet masks, some sponges. And I went ahead and picked up the Joey palette. So I'm just going to do this in my usual format. So we're going to start off with the details for the palette as well as the swatches. Then I'll be showing you how I got this look before telling you my final thoughts on the palette. And if you want to skip ahead to any section, I do always have timestamps in the description box down below. So let's jump straight in and take a look at this palette. So as I've already said, this is the Joey palette from the Revolution and Friends Season 3 drop. Now we have already had a lot of palettes in this collection and the first drop featured a palette for each of the women from the show. And this time they have given us one for Joey, one for Chandler and one for Ross. This particular palette comes in cardboard packaging and as always we do have a cardboard box and then you have this Polaroid style picture on the front with Joey's chair which is pretty iconic. Full disclosure here, I'm not like a massive fan of Friends, I never have been, but I feel like I've seen enough episodes at this point that I, you know, can talk about it with some confidence. <laughs> the palette retails for £8 for nine eyeshadows and we are getting one gram per shadow. We are at 89p per gram, so just comparing that to other palettes, it's definitely not one of the cheapest drugstore palettes that I have, but just comparing it to other Revolution palettes, it is one of the more expensive ones that I have. Only second to the Makeup Obsession 9 pan palettes which were tiny and ridiculous and I will link you to that review because I was very unimpressed. It's a thing that we've seen with Revolution where the prices have been climbing up a little bit. However, on this occasion it is slightly different. It's a collaboration. There's money that needs to go to Warner Brothers. So that is just something to be expected. In terms of the information that we have on the box, it's pretty standard. We have a diagram as always and any shades that are pressed pigments have an asterisk to tell us which ones they are. We as always have the symbol to tell us that it is not eye safe. That is very standard at this point. Something that I don't think I'd ever seen before is that just below the symbol to say that it's not eye safe, there's a symbol to say to use it on the face. I don't know, have we seen that before on a palette? I did actually end up using some of the shadows on my cheeks as well because I thought, you know, why not try and keep it cohesive and they worked fine for that. I mean, I've used them on my eyes. I always do. I will definitely get staining. There is a neon pink in here. Staining is unavoidable when it's a pressed pigment. We do have an ingredient list. It is on the back of the cardboard box, but not on the back of the actual packaging. Our shelf life after opening is 12 months, and the palette is also cruelty-free and vegan, which is pretty standard for Revolution at this point. And then when you open up the palette, this is what the colors look like inside. I couldn't not get this, could I? Look at that. This is absolutely gorgeous. Basically summer in a palette. It looks amazing. The shade names are all also based around a Joey, so that is really nice. You can recognize those moments in the show. However, I will say when I look at this palette, do I see Joey? I don't. If you think that this corresponds to Joey, definitely let me know in the comments. If I'm gonna look at these colors and think of anyone in the show, it's probably gonna be Phoebe with like brighter, more out there colors. I think for me, that's been a theme that's come back throughout this whole collaboration. And I know I've spoken to other people who felt the same way, but these character-based products haven't necessarily felt like they corresponded to the characters. I think it was in season one they gave us three palettes for each of the three women and they were just all nude and there were lipsticks that people didn't feel really lined up. The only one that actually works is the Ross palette because it is a neutral palette. I think it actually looks quite nice and that is the only one that I look at and I go yeah, actually, you know what? I can see that. I should add, though, that they did also release the blue lipstick, the Ichiban lipstick for men, which I think is perfect. I think it should have been a part of the collection from season one. So enough for the details of the palette. Let's go straight into the swatches. I don't know why I keep wearing long sleeved clothes when I have to do swatches. You would think I would know at this point. It's been, what, three years of YouTube? But no, I don't learn my lesson. So let's start off with the shade Joey. Uh, can you guys see that? I mean, that is basically my skin tone. There then we have Dr. Drake, and then a very classic neon pink, Mary Angela. A little bit chunky because this one is a pressed pigment, but nothing kind of out of the ordinary there. Then we have Nap Partner, Trifle, and Turkey. 
Again, a little bit chunky in the swatches, but nothing out of the ordinary because these are pressed pigments. And then finally we have Bamboozled, which swatches really, really well. Tribbiani and Junior. Did you guys see that? That <laughs> the whole flake just fell off my arm. <laughs> that Junior shade feels very different from everything else. Dr. Drake and that partner do feel really, really dry when you swatch them. Bamboozled, not so much, but that one is not a pressed pigment. Junior feels the softest out of all of them. It's not a pressed pigment either. It's also not a putty. That was my first thought. Like, is this a putty shade? And it's not. The thing that really, really jumps out to me when I look at these swatches, when I look at the shades in the palette, is that this really, really looks like the Huda Beauty neon palettes or their W7 dupes which is what I have I don't have the original Huda ones we have very very similar shades in here in fact let me grab them this is more exercise than I was planning on doing today so this one is the outrageous orange from W7 and I mean you can see that it does have a lot of colors in common particularly when it comes to the mattes it's got the yellow the pink and the orange and then the other one that I have here is glowing green and you can see in this one we do have the green and we do have a more nude shade although they are completely different. It feels like it's condensed the orange one and taken things out that might be repeating themselves a little bit and borrowed from the green one instead. So colour scheme wise I feel like this is very cohesive, very easy to use. I feel like there's not too much thinking involved in it which I always appreciate from a palette. If it's easy to use it gets a lot of points in my opinion. So now that we've gone through all of that let's move on straight into the tutorial for this look. Alright guys so I've just gone ahead and primed my eyes with my PWS base as always. It's really sunny outside, it's not warm but it is very sunny and that just definitely puts me in the mood to use these colors I mean this palette just screams summer doesn't it I'm gonna start off with the shade Mary Angela which picks up really really well I'm taking a morphe m124 I'm gonna get rid of any creases in my base and now that that's done I'm gonna pop that color on and we are off Oh, we are off to a pretty good start that is really really nice that is stunning that is off to a really good start i'm going to be going for the same shape that i did in my i heart revolution good luck charms review so i'm just gonna come in underneath and then go back up and we're gonna go for that slightly angled shape pack it on on the outer corner Yeah, that is really, really nice. That's packed on really well. That really wasn't a lot of work at all. Just gonna take a Morphe M456. I don't usually do this, but I wonder if this might help a little bit with blending issues I normally get. I'm just gonna try and soften up the edge a little bit. Not trying to bring it out any further or anything. Just soften it. Okay, brilliant pigmentation on the first shade. I hope that is a good sign for the rest of the palette. Next up, we are going to be going into the central shade, which is Trifle. I'm taking a Zoeva 231. Again, that is picking up really, really well. And I'm going to use that to blend my first shade out. Do I think of Joey when I think of the Trifle? I mean, I know he really enjoys eating it, but I feel like Rachel's the one who makes it, so that's who would come to mind. I don't know, let me know, let me know. Do you think the shade name Trifle belongs in the Joey palette or the Rachel palette? Okay, so I do feel like I'm having to dip in more into this shade than into the first one, but I always say this, I think that is literally just because of the fact that I am blending out with it, so I'm picking up less product. I'm not going in quite as heavily as I did with the first shade. That is really pretty. Oh, I really, really like the look of that, guys. Look at that shade it's making. All I need is for those shimmer shades or metallics. I don't know what they are yet because I haven't watch them. But yeah, as long as those shades are nice, I will be very happy because this is gorgeous. Summer days burn me out like 
Yeah, I have absolutely no issues here. This is really pretty. It's a really nice blend and it was really easy as well. I just checked and this shade is also a pressed pigments and I'm having zero issues with blending. I am finding this so much easier to blend than the browns in the I Heart Revolution palette the other day and I feel like it should be the other way around and it looks absolutely gorgeous on the eye. No complaints from me so far. And next up for our third shade, I'm gonna go in with the shade Turkey. I feel like you could very easily go in with Joey if you wanted to kind of almost tone it down a little bit, but that is not what I'm going for. I'm gonna go with Turkey on a Morphe M514. This one is another pressed pigment. I mean, that has picked up very, very well. I'm gonna go in quite carefully, I think, with it. It helps if we make sure the camera is focused. Oh, wow, guys, I mean... This blend is so pretty. I'm very excited about this. If the shimmery shades don't live up to this, I think I will actually be so upset. I saw the color scheme and immediately was like, you know what, I need this palette. Didn't think I'd be interested in picking up anything from the Friends range, but this one I was like, yeah, I need this. And now I'm getting it on my eyes. I'm like, yeah, yeah, I did need this. <laughs> I did. Wow. I mean, this is so effortless and I love the way it looks. All of my colors are visible. There's some definition, but they've also blended in really well. Like this is a real pleasure to work with. I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of trifle quickly again, but literally just a tiny bit. And then just back into my blending brush. And then maybe a touch of Mary Angela on the M456 again. All right, well, that, that was quick. That was pretty good. The pigmentation, I mean, I feel like I'm repeating myself, but the pigmentation is absolutely 10 out of 10. Blendability, again, 10 out of 10. I'm just looking at it and I feel like I wanna bring the yellow in just a little bit further at the front. A little bit more, but in terms of using this palette, this, I'm very, very pleased with this. I feel like if something is maybe just missing a little bit from this palette for me, it is just a brow highlight shade. However, I appreciate that it is a nine pan. It is not going to have everything that you need in there, so I don't mind. If you do have deeper skin, I feel like maybe Nap Partner could be a good one, but on me, I know it's just gonna be way too dark. So I am gonna go and cut my crease, and then I will come back and we will have a play with those shimmers and see if they live up to the mats. All right, guys, so that is my cut crease on. I've just used my Mica Beauty Cosmetics Eyeshadow Primer because that is what I prefer to use at the moment. I still haven't tried my P. Louise Paint in blank canvas. I really need to do that. But yeah, I have just gone ahead and used this. And let's jump into these shimmers. And I'm really, really nervous because it's going very well so far. And if these shimmers ruin it, I think I'm gonna start off with Nap Partner and then I'm gonna head into the pinks and then that'll blend into the neon pink that we have out here. I'm gonna take my smallest flat eyeshadow brush and I'm gonna go into Nap Partner. Uh, okay, so you do need to dig a little bit to pick up, but it does pick up. It doesn't seem to be like a putty formula, so you guys know I'm happy. Just gonna make sure there is no creasing. Okay, all right, let's do this. Ooh, okay. I would say that this definitely feels more similar to the shimmer formula in the W7 Huda dupes. Where I've started to pack it on, it's not looking great. It is a little bit chunky, so I'm having to pick up quite a lot, so I don't know if that's where it's going wrong. So I'm just gonna spray the brush. I think that should help the texture. Oh, okay, this might be one of those rare occasions where spraying the brush is actually going to work for me. Tell you what, let me just try going in with a finger as well. 
Okay, maybe the finger is the best thing to do. Yeah, it seems to be picking up a lot better, but obviously I then can't get into the edges of the cut crease. So I'm just gonna finish that off with a brush. I definitely think that this would make a nice inner corner or brow highlight on someone with deeper skin. Is this a pressed pigment? This one is a pressed pigment. I do sometimes struggle with shimmery pressed pigments because they can just be super flaky. And I think that's what's happening here. Maybe if I had gone in with the matte shades first and then I was going over this as a topper Then it would work a little bit better. It's not the best, but we're gonna carry on. So next up next to that I'm gonna go in with Dr. Drake. Yeah, they are quite dry to pick up I would say but I feel like this one is picking up a little bit better. I'm gonna pop that on Okay, this one looks super pretty. It's just not super intense, but it does have some nice gold reflex to it. Let me spray the brush again. I feel like these are almost a little bit too dry. Ah, there we go, yeah. Like, I know I keep saying I don't want the putty formula and I don't like that, but there's gotta be a middle ground and spraying the brush Definitely works better. Oh wait, no. Oh, we were doing so well. I think it's so chunky It's like removed a little bit of base underneath. I don't know, right? Let me let me add a third shade Oh, we were doing so so well. I'm a bit worried. All right, let me try Bamboozled. And those last two were pressed pigments. This one isn't and it is a lot softer So I think this one is gonna go. Yeah, there you go. That one's just gone on so much better. I think possibly these shades would work better if they weren't pressed pigments because this one's gone on really well this one is more of a metallic but I do feel like it has a nice reflection to it so I'm quite happy with that I'm just going back in with some of Dr. Drake now and you know what I will commend Revolution for actually doing different textures because you guys know that's been my complaint in my last few reviews that normally they only do metallics like at least we've got something else but they're not the easiest to use and that has disappointed me a little bit. I'm gonna go back into Nat Partner now. Yeah, I'm just having to dig into these shimmers so much. <sighs> I would say Nat Partner's the most disappointing because I feel like it's just been a lot of work for that and it's not that nice. Like, I mean, it's just not, is it? The pinks are probably the ones that I like the most. Nat Partner is a is a miss for me, unfortunately. But I had a feeling that might happen because I was doing so well with the mattes. We have got some texture issues on the lid. We do, unfortunately. I think I've just ended up piling so much. I'm taking some more of Dr. Drake again, yeah. Yeah, that is Dr. Drake. I mean, overall, the effect is nice, but I think that my favorite of the shimmers is Bamboozled, which is not a pressed pigment. But I think as toppers, they might work because then I wouldn't be piling on as much product. All right, so I just went ahead and did the cut crease on the other eye and I do just wanna say that I am really not enjoying the shade Nat Partner, unfortunately. I don't know if you guys can see, I've got some serious hard pan going on because I was going back in with that brush that I had sprayed, but I was really struggling to get the product out and it just started looking really chunky on this eye. It was even harder to use than it was on this eye. So yeah, Nat Partner, I'm not really enjoying. I had a much better time with Dr. Drake actually I think because I didn't spray the brush again just went on a bit better So I feel like that one you can get away with not spraying and then bamboo sold was absolutely fine when it comes to Pigment shimmers. I think I do just prefer them in loose form. I feel like they always work better I feel like I just struggle to work with them a bit more when they're pressed and that was my issue with the Beauty Bay and Mitchell palette For example, absolutely love that palette, but the shimmers that was just something that I couldn't get to work because they are so chunky Yeah, I feel like I'm just having the same issue with that again. Anyway, let's move on. Let's carry on I'm just gonna take some P. Louise base on a Zoeva 231 and Just pop that on And then I'm gonna take the shade Tribbiani down here, which is a lovely, lovely shade of green. And as you can see again, picking up so, so, so well. And that is gonna go right on top of that base. So we've got that really nice contrasting in a corner. I think actually this palette would have worked really nicely if we had a corresponding shimmer to every matte. Like I would have quite liked to see a shimmery green, we also don't have a shimmery orange. But that's me being a bit picky, like I don't think it's necessarily missing, but looking at that shade of green, I would have really liked to have the same but 
shimmery. Next up, I'm going to do my waterline using the shade Strobe Light from Barry M. And this is a pretty good match to that green. I feel like my eyes are watering today. Thank you. And then what I wanted to do for the liner detail was use a green, but I don't have one that matches the green eyeshadow, which I'm really, really disappointed by. So instead, I went in with the shade Tango from Sheen Cosmetics. And then I'm going to be really unoriginal. I'm going to add a nice, thick, smoky liner. I always do the other eye first, let it dry down a little, and then I normally start with a Sigma E36, just to blend that out. And then I'm just gonna take some more of Mary Angela on my M456 and pat that on the end. Alright, so that is it for the eyes. Listen, apart from that partner, which I think I've already expressed my feelings on enough at this point, I really, really like how this is looking so far. It's so bright. I feel like I've literally just thrown like a pack of sweets at my face and I'm very happy with the result. So I'm just gonna go and finish off the rest of the look, do my skin and everything off camera, and I'll be right back and we'll go over my final first impressions on the palette. Alright guys, here is the finished look. As I mentioned earlier in the video, I did decide to try out some of the shades as blushes, seeing as they did suggest that on the box. I decided I wanted to go really warm, so I started off with Trifle and then added some of Turkey. I don't think it's necessarily the colours that suit me the most, but I felt like it needed to be really, really over the top with this look. But I also feel so ready for summer now, and I adore how this look has come out. Overall, I would say that I'm pretty satisfied with this palette. As I said, I love how the look came out. The mattes in this palette are phenomenal. They they really, really are. I think this is some of the best mattes that I've seen from Revolution in a while. Not that I try every single one of their palettes, but I have to say it was a really good experience. Blending was just so easy. The colours are bright. They're gorgeous. I like the selection that we have. We've got a good amount of options. I like that we don't have any repeats as well. We have one of each and there's just loads that we can do with it and the quality was great. So I'm super, super happy with that part. The shimmers, I would say I am a little bit less impressed with and I think the issue was that they were pressed pigments. That partner in particular was just the most difficult one to use. I didn't have a good time with it. It was just very chunky. It ended up with a hard pan because I had to spray the brush so much. I really think the best way to use that one is going to be with your finger as a shade topper. I think I said it earlier, it's a very similar experience to the shimmers in the W7 palettes. Although I would say these ones are a little bit softer, but they are again very chunky and just work better as toppers. Dr. Drake ended up working a lot better for me and Bamboozled was the easiest one to use and that one wasn't a pigment. I do feel like the shimmers could be a bit more varied again, like maybe a purple or a green. I don't know, something to just give us a bit more options. Where I don't really like Nap Partner, I might mainly end up using it as an inner corner highlight, and then that just leaves me with two pinks and a gold. Yeah, I just wish that there had been something else just to add a bit more variety. But I'm pretty happy with this palette overall. I think it is a great summer palette. Even though the shimmers did bring the quality down for me a little bit, I would still say that this is one of the best Revolution eyeshadow palettes that I've tried this year. This is my miles ahead of my experience with the ultraviolet palette. I know I keep comparing back to that one, but I was just so disappointed with that one. I'm just not experiencing those levels of disappointment today. I'm very excited about it. I can see myself reaching for it so much when it's sunny. And if you've been on the fence about this one, I would be happy to recommend it. I think overall it was a pretty good experience. So that is it for today's video, guys. I do hope as always that you enjoyed it. Definitely let me know in the comments if you are gonna be picking up anything from this release. Make sure as well that you give this video a big thumbs up and if you haven't already then hit the subscribe button as well as the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos and I'll see you all on the next one. Bye guys! <laughs>